I'm here to talk about saws, specifically back saws, their care and maintenance. Lee Nielsen Tool Works makes about a dozen different back saws from the dovetail saw size to the 14 inch tenon saw, the carcass saw. All of these sizes are available rip and cross cut tooth configuration. This is our progressive pitch dovetail saw where the teeth start out fine at the tip, about 16 teeth per inch and end up at about 9 teeth per inch at the handle end. All of our saws have a solid milled brass back that helps stiffen the blade in the cut. They are meant to be held like this in a pistol grip which helps control the saw in the cut. Saws are not meant to be held like this. Now let's take a look at proper sawing technique. First of all you want to stand comfortably with your feet apart one foot in front of the other far enough back from the bench so you have room to move. Place your thumb next to the line to guide the saw. There are different opinions about how to start a saw in a cut. I like to start it with a saw tilted slightly up and start on the back stroke. The important part is not to have too much pressure downward in the cut. Let the saw do the work. As you establish the cut, you can apply a little more pressure. But even then, let the saw do the work. This is some scrap cherry. It pays to mark lines on a scrap piece of wood and to saw a lot to get used to technique and being able to cut straight. Practice makes perfect in this, definitely. Sooner or later, you're going to want to sharpen your saw. Every cutting tool needs to be kept sharp for optimal performance. Now this might be once a month, it might be once every year, it might be once every two years, depending on how hard and often you use your saw. But you're going to want to know how to sharpen it to keep it in top condition. So let's look at some techniques. To start with, you need a way to hold the saw. This is an antique saw vise. There are lots of different styles that were made and available. This is approximately the right size for a dovetail saw. But it's not really very convenient for sharpening a longer saw like a tenon saw. And definitely inconvenient for a panel saw. So what I like to do is to make my own saw vise, which is quite easy. This is one we use in the saw shop every day. It's two pieces of plywood hinged together with leather with spacers nailed on so you can hold the saw blade. It goes right in the vise on your bench or a metal vise, whatever you might have. So let's start with a dovetail saw. You want to put the saw in the vise with as little of the teeth protruding as possible and you want it parallel and level. Next thing I like to do is to mark the teeth with a magic marker so that as you file them it's very obvious where you have removed metal and where you have not. Now our dovetail saw <coughs> is a rip saw, which means all the teeth are filed straight across. That means that you can do all of the filing from one side if you want to. And be careful to hold the file square to the blade and horizontal. Typically it's nice to start at the back of the saw. It's good practice because that's the part of the saw you use least and if you don't do quite as good a job on sharpening the back teeth it's not going to be a problem. By the time you get to the front you've got an, into a good rhythm. Sometimes it's useful to get a uh, inexpensive saw to practice on 
A um, lot of inexpensive dovetail saws are uh, filed cross-cut, but you can easily convert those to rip just by filing straight across. But don't be afraid to file a saw. It's not difficult to do, and once you know how to do it, you'll be able to keep your saws in great condition all the time. It's ideal to have the saw vise set up in a window so you have nice light coming on the saw. In fact, sometimes I wait for a very sunny day. But if you have good light in your workshop otherwise, it's fine to do it there. It's also ideal to have the saw at a height where you can stand. If you do a lot of sharpening, you should try to set that up. But for occasional sharpening, using it in a bench vise <coughs> with a stool works just fine. If you have a very long saw, you might want a stool with rollers so you don't have to keep moving yourself as you go down it. Okay, let's start. For sharpening western saws, you use a triangular file. This is a four inch double extra slim, which is the right size for a dovetail saw. It's important to use the right size file and not one that's too big or too small. If it's too big, you tend to have a more rounded, sharp edge, which creates a rounder gullet. It's okay with big teeth, but not with small ones. But more importantly, you want more than half of the file to be out of the tooth as you're filing, so that as the file wears, and you're going to want to rotate the file to use a fresh edge, yet you'll have more than half of the surfaces fresh and sharp and not worn. Now, I like to start at the heel or back of the saw, place the file in the tooth, make sure it's contacting front and back properly. Don't use a lot of downward pressure, easy. I like to put my front finger on the file to guide it. And remember you want to be horizontal and you want to be at right angles on a rip saw. Now, you want to count the number of strokes and do the same number of strokes on each tooth. So if your saw is very dull and you have to take three or four strokes, to remove the black marking. You need to do that on each tooth. Here I'm just using two strokes, pretty light, moving down the saw. You get into a rhythm as you go. If you push down too hard, the file has a tendency of catching on the tooth that's leaning towards you. So go, go lightly. There. Now it's always nice to Test cut a saw after you've sharpened it, but first we're going to sharpen a crosscut saw. <laughs> 